We are so grateful that you all are able to be here for this celebration of life for Linda Rivers, someone who was very important to her family, to her friends, and to this church family as well. And Preston, speaking for everyone here, we're so glad that you were able to get here. Uh, I know it was a long drive for you last night, and, uh, but we're so glad that you're here this morning, this afternoon, got here this morning. I'm going to ask the congregation to please stand following this entrance rite. Uh, there is a song that the family has chosen to have played, and we'll have everyone be seated after this entrance rite so that we can listen to these words and enjoy this music. Let us stand together. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the source of all mercy and the God of all consolation, who comforts us in all our sorrows so that we can comfort others in their sorrows with the consolation we ourselves have received from God. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Now we invite you to be seated. Didn't know today would be our last Or that I'd have to say goodbye to you so fast I'm so numb I can't feel anymore I'm praying you just walk back through that door and tell me that I was only dreaming You're not really gone as long as I believe There will be another angel Around the throne tonight Your love lives on inside of me And I will hold on tight not my place to question only God knows why I'm just jealous of the angels around the throne tonight always made my troubles feel so small and you were always there to catch me when I'd fall in a world where heroes come and go where well, God just took the only one I know so I'll hold you as close as I can Longing for the day When I see your face again But until then God must need another angel Around the throne tonight Your love lives on inside I will hold on tight It's not my place to question Only God knows why I'm just jealous of the angels Around the throne tonight 
This is the first funeral service that we have had inside uh, the sanctuary since this pandemic began in March. We're under very strict rules as we try to follow our synod council and our bishop. We appreciate the family being so cooperative with us and understanding these unusual circumstances in which we find ourselves. And we're grateful that we could have this service here in the sanctuary. I wanted to thank Don Simmons who played our prelude music and will be playing our hymns. Because of the synod regulations, we will not be singing those hymns, but they are familiar hymns and we know that you can listen to the music and reflect on the words and that it will be very meaningful for you. Let us stand together for the prayer of the day. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our sister, Linda. We thank you for giving her to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, we pray that you would console this family and these friends, all of us who mourn her passing. Illumine our lives so we may see in death the gate to eternal life, that we may continue our course on earth in confidence until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before us. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from the book of Romans. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will it be hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or the sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long and we are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Here ends the reading. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The gospel this afternoon comes to us from John chapter 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again 
and will take you myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do, and you've known him and seen him. Here ends the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. So first thing uh, I think about when I think about Linda Mays Rivers is how mighty and sassy she was in a tiny little package. You know, as I said the other evening with the family, we all agreed that Linda was a firecracker that, that packed a mighty punch. As we shared stories together, we came up with what Linda was, and that was that Linda loved more mighty than anything else. But she was also very loved. As a wife and a daughter, as a mother, especially as a grandmother and a great-grandmother, she loved and cared and nurtured all those who were around her. As we gathered the other evening to talk about Linda, the boys remembered living in Virginia, where Linda's family was from, and then coming a little more south to the great North State. You see, Linda married Fred Mays, and they were married for 17 years before Fred was sick and died from cancer. Linda loved and she cared for Fred and when he passed away, she later met and married Herb Rivers in the 1980s. Herb was also a very proud veteran, but he too had some health problems. But as Linda always did, she rose to the challenge and also cared for him until his death in 2015. The one thing I knew very well about Linda was how much and how proud she was of not only her boys, but how proud and how much she loved her grandsons. You know, as we sat, uh, Steve and, and Brian and Tammy and I sat and talked about Linda's fun and spunky spirit, about being embarrassed when she ever took anything back to a store, or uh, when she, the comments that she would make as she was picking them up from a fun night out. But honestly, the biggest thing was that love. And sometimes that love came in the form of a funny joke or a wise crack or just an elbow in the side. You see, Linda's family, too, meant the most to her, not just her boys, like I said, but also the women that they shared their lives with. Tammy remembered and talked fondly about how Linda loved her for who exactly she was. No matter where she was and how she was kind to both her and Donna. I remember when Brian's wife Donna died unexpectedly and Linda not only hurt for Stephen and Dylan, but she grieved mightily with them. How she always accepted new people into their family so easily. You see, Brian and Stephen both remember, too, what a great nana she was to their boys. She loved her grandchildren, as I say over and over again. Brian remembers when Dylan was little, they lived upstairs from them, and that most of the time Dylan would either end up at Nana and Pop's 
or that Dylan would call Nana to tell her how her father had been mean to him, how his father had been mean to him. And Stephen with Preston had a very similar story. Oh, all you had to do was call up Nana and she'd be right there. To be perfectly honest, when I think about people in the stories of their lives, typically I love to find a children's book. And as a children and youth minister, I feel like it helps us all understand a little more. One that popped into my head was a story that my my grandmother gave to me when I was little. The book was written in 1972 by Tommy DePaolo. The book was called Nana Upstairs, Nana Downstairs. In the book, Tommy, the main character, had a relationship with not only his grandmother, but also with his great-grandmother. Tommy would, would always talk about how they would go visit every Sunday His grandmother always seemed to be standing by the big black stove in the kitchen. And Tommy's grandmother took care of everyone. His memory of her by that big black stove is what he remembered best about his grandmother as he got older and turned into an adult. And there was a lot of times that that's exactly where Linda felt comfortable making a meal, and feeding people. You see, what I love about this book is it's a true story that Tommy DePaolo wrote about himself. And in the back of that book, he writes that he still considered it a wonderful experience and privilege that he knew his grandparents and his great-grandparents. That's both what Dylan and Preston will remember and what they will pass down to their children and their grandchildren as well. I have to tell you, when Pastor John or myself spend time with a family or know a family that we've known for years, like Linda and Preston and Herb, we have a blessing that we get to listen. We get to hear all the things that make up a life of an individual and then do our best to minister in a time of great sadness and grief, but also in a time of great joy, to have known and experienced the life of an individual like Linda, surrounded by each of the stories that every person knew. The funny stories, the sad stories, the spicy stories, I feel like that there are plenty of them around. One of Linda's greatest stories and brightest lives in light was her work as a seamstress. You see, Linda was a great seamstress. And actually, I think she made some of the pyramids that we have here at the church. You know, as a great seamstress, she was sought out to make dresses, to fix dresses, to hem to alter, but also to fit people in designer gowns. As we talked about her work at Hancock Fabrics, the boys remember that one time she made a dress for Miss Universe. I feel like the boys remembered that dress fondly. She loved that work, and she always put just as much into it as she did into her family. I'm sure that many of you have your own stories of Linda and know those times that Linda also had an unshakable strength and faith. In the past couple years, that's exactly what she had. It was unshakable. With her body deteriorating, she stayed strong, never complained, and always did her best to support and love her family, and work as long as she could. In mid-March, before the pandemic, Linda started to deteriorate more. And in the week before Linda passed away, her family had all checked in on her. She was weak. She went to the hospital and to hospice soon thereafter. 
Stephen talks about the night before Linda died, that she called him, and they talked and cut up for 30 minutes, like it was just another day. Or one of the last times that she talked with Brian, he went to get her cat food, and he popped in, and as a surprise, and got her food, put it on the counter, and she waved at him, and she told him how much she loved him. Friends, rest assured that Linda loved each and every one of you just like that. To help us to understand our grief, we talk a lot about the Word of God. You see, the Word of God can give us love, comfort, peace, and understanding. In the Gospel reading for today, Jesus is telling His disciples exactly where he's going. For the disciples, though, they aren't really very sure of that. So Jesus has to reassure him, them, like he reassures us. In this text, it's my favorite disciple, Thomas, as many of you know as Doubting Thomas. You know, I really think Thomas gets a bad rap for asking bold questions. He says, Jesus, if we don't know where you're going, how will we know where to get there? Jesus replies to Thomas and he says, Thomas, I will come back for you and I will show you the way. That's what Linda knew and that's what she professed in her faith. Linda was ready, but she also didn't want to bother or disrupt anyone's lives. You see, for Linda, she wasn't scared about where she was going. She knew that very firm. She might have been a little scared about how to get there. Where her body was worn, her faith was strong. And as the family and I have talked and reminisced, we talked about the person that Linda really was. In that, I, talk, I, I really remember about the words from the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 8. If God is for us, who is against us? Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will it be hardship, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, or peril, or sword? No. In all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor anything else in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Friends, I tell you this today because Linda certainly knew it and she certainly understood it that the love of God in Christ Jesus, the love that she knew and the love that she showed to all of her friends and family. She may have left this world, but that love stays with you forever. It stays in our hearts, it stays in our stories, and it stays in our minds. She may have left this world but she will be with you forever. And will you see her again? Absolutely. You will see her with open arms right beside Jesus in the arms of the resurrection. Linda's reminds us, Linda reminds us that sometimes too we are nanas just like the story. She leaves us with a life that was full of blessing in a life that had some sadness, but a life that was lived out in pure joy. Linda might be gone, but remember she lives with each and every one of us. She lives on in all of us as a strong, spunky firecracker that she was. She lives in us through the resurrection of Christ Jesus, and we will see her again. As Frederick Beekner, a Presbyterian theologian, writes, The grace of God means something like this. Here's your life. You may have never have been, but you were because the party wouldn't 
have been as good without you. Friends, today's celebration is not that of sadness. For you see, God's grace comes to all of us in Jesus. And Linda is in no more pain or sorrow. And the party is complete until we meet her again. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your chosen people together in one communion, in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to newness of life, and that through the grave and gate of death we may pass with him to our joyful resurrection. Grant to all of us who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith that your Holy Spirit may lead us in holiness and righteousness 
all our days. Grant to all who are mourning this day a sure confidence in your loving care that casting all of their sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Give courage and faith to those who are bereaved, that they may have strength to meet the days ahead in the comfort of a holy and certain hope and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. Grant us grace to entrust Linda to your never-failing love, which sustained her in this life. Receive her into the arms of your mercy and remember her according to the favor you bear for your people. God, the generations rise and pass away before you. You are the strength of those who labor. You are the rest of the blessed dead. We rejoice in the company of your saints. We remember this hour all who have lived in faith, all who have peacefully died, and especially those most dear to us who rest in you. Give us, in time, our portion with those who have trusted in you and have striven to do your holy will. To your name, with the church on earth and the church in heaven, we ascribe all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And now, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray your prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us stand together for the commendation. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Linda. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of all the saints in light. Amen. And so we say, let us go forth in peace, in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.